Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mass and Drum Whiskey Room. It is Whiskey Wednesday night. I am Jason C. Welcome to what is sure to be a uh, fun-filled show packed with new whiskeys, uh, a little bit of a blind tasting. It's 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 going to be a, a hell of a night here. Um, let me see here. Yeah, we're going to fire it up. We're going to fire that shit up right now. Um, let's see here. Let me get to folks in the chat here. Say hi to you guys. Uh, let me go to the chat here. Christopher David in the house. What's going on, Chris? Nice to see you, man. JC Marisigan, what is going on, man? He said he's not going to be able to make it, but he's just hanging out. Um, yeah, I, I just got this uh, this notification about my internet being unstable. I don't know what the hell is going on with it. This is pissing me off. Well, hopefully, it fixes itself, guys. Um, this has been happening with StreamYard for a little bit. I don't know if it's StreamYard. It's definitely not my internet. I don't know what's going on, but uh, hopefully it clears itself up here, guys. Uh, we have Mike Franklin here. We have Brett Marquette. We have Bose Wine Guy in the house. Bourbon Apprentice is here. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave Vogelsang. Saucy Shane in the house. Uh, what is going on? Tim Cornet. Jake McGee. Uh, let's see here. Wade Ward is here. What's going on, man? John Perclay. How you doing, bud? Adam Henson is here um let's see here what's going on man a lot of people coming in here what is good dustin pichelle is here uh Gipar says love this whiskey juice back in the saddle again <laughs> learman 2001 is here what's going on man uh wade ward says appointment live stream <laughs> is that what it is everyone just makes the appointment for a uh, whiskey wednesday night i love it uh let's see kenneth Rab up late making brownies for the boss last day at work might as well join in while they're at okay i like it Brownie's always good. What's up, Whiskey Nose? What's going on? Cheers, MJ Army, says Ben Dramon. What is up? Uh, love the drums on the opening track. Yeah, so do I, man. Shit is awesome. Um, best day of the week, sipping on some local Virginia whiskey tonight. KO Distillery, single barrel cash strength, wheat, 60 wheat, 30% rye, 10% barley, 121 in blinds. It's an AWA 107 and Maker's Mark 46 cash strength killer. Oh, that's good to see. Uh, the K Luke looks interesting. What's going on, DC? Nice to see you, man. How you doing, Karen? Bourbon Friend says you're still blurry, but it's still handsome. Okay, I'll take it. What's up, my bourbon journey? Uh, Circle City Bourbon in the house, and a bunch more people coming in. K Luke is here. What's up, Jonathan Garrett? Yeah, a lot of um, clear as a bell on my phone, but blurry on the TV. That is weird. Uh, Jason, you best definitely have the best name. Means all whiskey too. Cheers and let's go. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. So, yeah, what's gonna what's going on tonight here? So tonight, um, tonight basically what we're gonna do is let me turn that off. Maybe that'll help some of the internet. Uh, I hate when this happens. This pisses me off. How is the connection unstable? I don't get it. Let me like it like literally just happens. But I, of course, right when I connect, it happens. Ah, whatever. All right. Hopefully it fixes itself, guys. I'm sorry for that. I don't know what's going on with the internet. Um, and I'm delayed. And I'm delayed as well. That's great. What the hell, man? Whoa, whoa. I just, just made myself full screen. Let me see if I could, uh, yeah, let me unplug it, plug it back in. Hold on, guys. Let me maybe mess with this. Audio and video don't sing. It's like an acid trip. Oh my gosh, this sucks. Hold on, guys, stay right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna refresh it. Hopefully, maybe that'll fix it. Hold on one sec. Oh, maybe not. Oof, that's actually worse. What the fuck? 
Uh, oh man, it's gonna piss me off. It's already pissing me off. I hate when shit's not going like this. I'm not on Wi-Fi, you stupid computer. I'm directly in. So what is the problem? Let me do this. Let me go to um Yeah. Minecraft master. Yeah. I do. I look like I'm in Minecraft right now. I'm all pixelated. That sucks. Uh, you are live. Let me try this on my network preferences, guys. Let me, let me see if this works. Um, let me try that. Um, Just bear with me, guys, real quick. I'm sorry, man. This, I don't know why it is doing this to me right now. It says the connection is unstable. How is it unstable? I'm directly, I'm doing the same shit I always do. All right. Let me, I'm going to refresh this, guys. Hold on one sec. All right, did that work? Did that? Am I am I somewhat am I somewhat uh, clear now? Let me see here. Ooh, that might have worked. That might have worked. Much better. Okay. All right. You got to blow into the router like a Nintendo cartridge. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm gonna do. If I see that shit happen again, guys, I'm just gonna refresh the screen and we'll go from there, man. So I don't know what's going on, on the internet tonight. Uh, again, welcome back to the Master Drum Whiskey Room, guys. Uh, appreciate everyone hanging out here. Um, uh, basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to taste through a bunch of new brands uh, that I've been meaning to try tonight. Um, I actually just got this bottle. I didn't get a chance to get the one, get this one. This is the Bartstown for Cullen. Uh, so this is the blend of Kentucky. I think it's two Kentucky bourbons. And then on top of that, you have a 21-year-old Irish whiskey in there. Um, and then you have a, oh, of course they add a little dickle in the mix, 17 year old Tennessee bourbon with 21 year old for Cullen Irish whiskey finish and Marsala casks. So there's a lot going on this whiskey. Uh, I had a sample of it a while back. Haven't tried it, you know, ever since. So using my uh, fancy mash and drum little glass here. Um, Hey, can we first get into the fact that, that, that the bourbon Predicted the winner of the Super Bowl last week. It said the Chiefs would win, and look what happened. Sorry, Philadelphia fans. The Chiefs won. I do think they got hosed a little bit on that holding call at the end of the game. I would have liked to see Jalen Hurts get a shot at coming down the field, you know, to either tie it or whatever it may be. Um, you know, that's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but, I mean, come on. Yeah. You hadn't called anything all game, and then right at the end of the game, within the last two minutes, you you, you call that. Just didn't make sense to me. It was a little bit of a ticky-tack call, I'm just saying. But the bourbon did. I got all these messages that night saying, hey, the bourbon was right. You got to do it again next year. So <laughs> whoever's in the Super Bowl next year will do it again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a very um, – uh, it was a very good um, – it was it was a it was a very good game though. I I did have a lot of uh, I had a lot of fun watching that game. So all right, hate kneel down finishes says EJ. I'm digging the hat. Silver ATL unis would be yeah, yeah. I figured I'll just wear my I just wear my uh, my Atlanta hat tonight uh, before because hey baseball starts soon and I get to get my uh, my heart ripped out by the Mets at some point. So it'll be it'll be all good, man. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, let's go here. Um, Bourbon is live. Chiefs, the dude admitted he held. It was an easy call. Yeah, Adam, I, I understand that, but there was a lot more shit going on in that game, and you know it, that did not get called. So to call that with two minutes left is kind of bullshit. 
I mean, I know it's in front of him. Maybe he felt like he had to make the call, but that is just not like, let him play, dude. That is not the time to, especially, I mean, look where you are. You're all the way down. The Chiefs are running the clock down. You can't make that call there. I'm sorry. Just make it a game for everybody to watch. You know, sometimes you got to throw, you got to put that flag away. I don't care what, I don't care what people say. Um, Jalen Hurts should have caught the ball. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Jalen Hurts did make he did make a mistake. He did cough the ball up. Um, yeah, I mean, I think they shouldn't have given up a 10-point lead personally. Yeah, I mean, the the fact that all of a sudden the Chiefs figured it out in the second half and came back and you know just stormed over the Eagles after the Eagles controlled the game for the entire first half uh was telling. They figured something out. Either that or the Chiefs just woke up. It, it was a really good game, though. So um, you wish them Falcons got one of them flags. <laughs> uh, man, Jason, you a hockey guy? Yeah, I'm a New York Rangers. New York Rangers till the end, man. Love my Rangers. Um, can we stop calling Burrow the king? He hasn't won shit. Uh, Mahomes is the undisputed king right now. Yeah, I, I, I just think that, I mean, Joe Burrow, I just think he gets a lot of the publicity because, you know, he, he does win under some great pressure games. He didn't really have a great offensive line all year. The guy played great. So I'll still put him in one of the top five QBs in the in the, uh, in the the league for sure. Uh, Burrow. I finally got around to watch the episode of Burn Pursuit that you were on and you crushed it. Hopefully you'll be invited back, says Jeff Perkins. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. That was a lot of fun. All right. Guys, let me know what you're drinking on. Let's get into the uh, the first pour of the night tonight. Here we go. Time for baseball. Brady's the goat, y'all. <laughs> yeah, Burrow is legit. Yeah, and, and Mahomes kind of, you know, limping around on one leg and doing it. You know, I mean, I know there's a lot of shit in here. You have the Irish whiskey, 21 year. You have the two, uh, you have the two uh, Kentucky bourbons, and you have the 17 year old Dickel. I still smell the Dickel though. Still could smell it through here. I was battling, uh, I think you guys, I'd said I was battling a little bit of a cold the last, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. And I'm finally all just like completely, the, my nose is like super sensitive right now. Uh, so tonight we're going to be doing some of this, some of that, some of that. Uh, so a couple of bottles here before we go. Well, let me take a sip first, guys. Cheers. That's a weird ride. Ooh, my palate's really sensitive tonight, too. All this stuff's just happening on the palate. There's good spice there. You get all the vanilla, the sweetness from the Kentucky bourbon, but right at the mid palate, the 17 year Dickel and the Irish whiskey are almost fighting each other, like for, you know, for supreme dominance. <laughs> you have that minerality of the Dickel, then you have the, there's like that tropical note from um uh from the whatchamacallit that tropical notes from that you get from the uh from the old ultra age iris whiskey that come through as well so blurry screen is back you're lagging a little bit again oh my god i hate this all right let me refresh it guys be right back All right. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we're just going to have to do tonight. It seems like every time I refresh it, it just helps out a little bit better. Um, is this the new Fuzzy D technology? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got nothing. There's like, there's nobody here. Nobody's like running Netflix or anything. So I'm not sure why it's running. Maybe it's just my internet provider just being shitty tonight. Who knows? Um, So if any of you guys have had ultra age Irish whiskey, what happens is you start to get all these tropical notes that come through, like a pineapple fruit roll up type thing. It's like this waxy, fruity type note to it. Maybe like a little mango. I'm totally getting that in here. Um, that for Cullen 21 year is right there. That second sip I just had, it doesn't really fight it as much. Uh, now these are 160 bucks, I think, for any of these Bardstown collaborations.
<laughs> it's the yeah, the neighbors stealing my friggin' internet. Um, oh man. You know, I, I like it. I don't love it. Um, I think it's very good, but uh, I, I don't think it's 160 good. Um, maybe this will open up, get a little bit better over time. Uh, and one thing, Barstown Berman Company, if Ron, if anybody's watching right now, look. Oh, it stayed on. When I first opened this, the top came off the plastic. Just saying. <laughs> Like, I know you had to switch to synthetic cord so you didn't do the heavy metal anymore, but it seems to just be, like, coming off, like, the glue's coming off, or I'm not sure what it was. Um, let's see. Blue Run bought your internet provider. I'm messing with you. Yeah, they might be. They might be. Uh, how many people here remember the AOL login sequence? Oh, yeah, I totally remember that shit. Bardstown is making butterfly... Butterfly what? <laughs> I don't know what that's saying. <laughs> Just review Dusty's when it's lagging. Might be like AOL days. Yeah, I might have to. Um, okay. So this one's pretty solid. Um, but I think hopefully uh, hopefully it gets better from here. I don't know if you guys saw, but I just released a review for this uh, just tonight. The new Chattanooga Cabernet finished uh, from uh, finishing Silver Oak Cabernet casks. Uh, Silver Oak is one of the biggest, um, one of the most well-known uh, wine makers in, um, in, in the United States. So pretty, uh, pretty amazing stuff, but that's a straight malt. That is not the Tennessee high malt, the bourbon mash bill with the Tennessee high malt. That is all malt. That is five different types of malt blended together to make that. So it's very chocolate. It's very coffee, coffee bean, a little bit of raspberry. I think in the review, I described it as like a, um, like somebody made like a, like a raspberry espresso type thing. It just gets more coffee and coffee as you dive into it. If you like malt, it's a great pickup. It's only 60 bucks. Chattanooga is always great with their special releases and making them affordable, making them um, attainable for folks. Obviously, Chattanooga still isn't, you know, nationwide. Um, but, I, you know, they do pop up on Sealbox and some other online sites if you're interested in getting that. It's a, it's a solid whiskey. I did not like it at first. When I first cracked that open... The toasted oak that's in it, and the um, and I think the all the maltiness, it was bitter, and I was like, "Uh, this is not what I'm used to with Chattanooga." I'm like, "What's happening here?" And then it just seemed to get better and better as it opened up here. So it's it's been nice. Um, the stream blue run there with the BJ is interesting. Trey seems like a good dude though. There was definitely things said I didn't agree with. Yeah, I listen, Trey Trey over at Blue Run. I mean, I love what they're doing. Just like I said last week, guys. You know, I. I just wish it was a little bit more. I, I love the fact that they're bringing together folks to do these different experiences and make it special for them and designing the bottle. I mean, the marketing is, is, is amazing. You can't, you can't knock them for the marketing. It's perfect. I just wish it was a little bit more about the whiskey than just the marketing. I mean, listen, it's uh you know, everybody has an opinion. I just feel like the whiskey is not there yet for the price they're charging. No single barrel picks for $200, you know, who knows? Maybe, listen, maybe they'll roll out some older barrels for that stuff. I mean, hopefully, but um, you're, you're paying more for the bottle and the experience and you're paying off for the actually whiskey in it. I mean, let's be honest when you're good, when you go to that and, and you guys have been through this. I mean, I've done it. You go to an experience, you're in like a bar, you're with buddies, you're with a, a big group of family and friends and you're trying a whiskey. And because of that experience, because of the experience and who's around you, that whiskey just tastes that much better. It always does. If you're in good company, the whiskey's just going to taste better. Um, and I'll always stand by that because I think it's I think it's a true statement. Um, I just think that you have a you, you kind of create that uh, that fellowship between people coming in to do the the blue run pick. You get to design the bottle, and people are going to think the whiskey is great if it's not. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it is what it is. So. Um, Trey was great. Him and the BJs were fangirling each other. It was gross. <laughs> Dude, Trey is a man. I like Trey a lot. Um, I would love to have him on the channel if I didn't shit on Blue Run all the time, but they probably wouldn't want to come on. So I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight. I'm not gonna fight that fight. Um, hey Jason, is the Lucky Seven the Frenchman batch to a buy or pass at 90 bucks? Um batch two. So the Frenchman. I'm a little bit hot and cold on the Frenchman. Uh, I mean, sometimes I have it, I'm a fan. Sometimes I have it, I'm not. I honestly rather just buy the holiday toast. I think that's more of a of a of a um 
like a sure thing when it comes to flavor, to be honest. Uh, Popham says, bro, did you the six-year uh, BBC pick to still pack the old pepper and saying y'all definitely need to look at uh, Popham, we got one coming for m and we, we picked one way early, man. We got one coming. Um, uh, so let's see here. The message on my main issue was he kept calling Blue Run a craft whiskey brand. I'm not sure he'd call four-year source parts time for majority fun and brand crap, but Trey seems great. Yeah, Trey's a, Trey's a good dude. Got my first stack junior, says Gipar. That's awesome, man. Okay, I like that. Um, all right, let's go to hmm, what should we open first here? Uh, we'll do the K Luke's a little later. There's a lot that goes into that. Let's try this one. This one I'm really interested in. So, cool story behind this one. Now, I mentioned this bottle, you know, probably a good, uh, hmm, this must have been a few weeks back. This bottle right here. Is from Dead River Distilling. Now, if you guys have never heard of this one, you might not have heard of this one. Let me know in the chat if you have heard of Dead River. Oh, sorry, Dread River Distilling, not Dead River. Um, so let's see here. This is Ebony Major's first release since leaving Bullet. So um, let me uh, pull this up here. So Dread River Master Series comes from Birmingham, Alabama. So any of you guys in Alabama, you may know about this brand, uh, the Dread River Distilling Company. This is bottled at 100 proof. It's the new Dread River Master Series release. It's a blend of Kentucky bourbon distilled in October 2017 and January 2019. So you're looking at like, you're looking at some young juice in here. Uh, now, according to Rob Report, the... Um, this is from uh, Ebony Major. So Dread River Master Series by Ebony Major is available now for pre-order. I got this on pre-order because I want to try it. It was 115 bucks, which was pretty pricey for such a young, uh, such a young whiskey. It's located two blocks from where my grandmother lived her entire life, said Ebony Major. Besides that, I've known this building my entire childhood, passing it every time I visited her. So it felt like it was meant to be. I had no idea what liquid I used initially. I was set on a rye at first because I love rye. That didn't work out, so I searched and searched and then found a handful of barrels of Kentucky bourbon. The barrels I selected were distilled in age in October 2017 and January 2019 and dumped December 2022. This is a unique blend of three lots across six barrels, yielding only 1,500 bottles of Kentucky straight bourbon. So that's what we have in the bottle. Um says a little here in the fine print, Master uh, master Blender, Ember, Ebon, uh, uh, Ebony Major, um, blend number one, like I said, 100 proof. So let's get into here. Uh, Peter White, the best thing I ever did was not open the Blue Run 14 year and was able to combine it with a uh, Van Winkle rye in trade for 30 year. Bro, thanks for the advice to trade it. Yeah, Peter White, you made out on that deal. Yeah, 30 year Bro, are you crazy, dude? Yeah, you know, you know why I said to trade it because that was just sourced. It was just sourced Barton, which you could get. I mean, sourced Barton is everywhere. Lucky Seven, Calumet, the sourced Barton everywhere. Nothing about that bottle made it made it a two hundred and fifty, two hundred sixty dollar bottle, except for the bottle design. So, Dread River has very good sherry finish rye. Okay, um, Roll Tide says Mamuka. <laughs> Uh, Dread River has a, okay, let's see. Yes, I have their first release. Just okay. Low proof sipper. One of the owners is an orthopedic surgeon from Andrew Sports Medicine. Oh, all right. Thanks for the background. One more cast. Okay. All right. So let's try this Dread River. I'm not saying it's going to be something magical, but you know, Ebony Major made an impression on me when she released that bullet. Uh, what was it? That, uh, that blenders select, um, which I thought was a fantastic bourbon for the money. Um, obviously what happened happened with her at uh, at bullet she left um, and now it looks like she's doing some you know something along the lines of what Marianne Eves is doing is kind of consulting kind of doing some blends here and there across the whiskey and bourbon landscape so let's see what she uh, whipped up here first things first it does smell youthful but it also smells extremely citrusy we're not, and I'm not just talking orange. I'm talking, there's like a lemon bar thing going on in this. Oh, this is actually opening up kind of nicely here. Um, 
Hmm. I mean, I I'm not expecting this to be worth 115 bucks, but you know, smaller smaller uh, production. You have a master blender kind of helping with this. The price is going to be a little bit high, guys. This really nice vanilla cream note, almost like cake batter. Again, that orange lemon bar. It's like a lemon bar with like fresh whipped cream on it. Not that cool whip. Not cool whip, but like fresh made, fresh made, um, you know, uh, like fresh made whipped cream with like a little bit of heavy vanilla in it. Smoke wagon has dropped in our area of Western Wisconsin. That's awesome, man. All right, let's try this thing. It smells good. Did not expect that at all. I was waiting for this lemon punch. It went all peach. It went peaches. This is like one of those peach rings that you just chew on. Good spice on it, though. She said she couldn't find rye, but this could be, this could have a good rye content in it. This is spicy peach. Spicy peaches <laughs> on the palate. That lemon does come through. It's almost like this peach lemon tea, but you don't get it until about it's it's uh, like a third of the way back on the palate. It's not on the finish. It's right before the finish hits. You get this blast of peach and um and and lemon, like this like like if you took lemon and peach snapple, blended them together. I, it's it's weird. It's like I get like this immediate lemon and then peach like right after it, right right on the back of the palate, and then the front of the palate, the front of the palate's a little bit flat, not much going on unfortunately. That's where you get all the vanilla cream, is in the front of the palate. I gotta say this actually has a nice texture for only being a hundred proof. It's got a good viscosity to it. Um. I could see a lot of people really liking this. Um, it, it's very, it's very fruit forward. Like I said, peach, lemon, a lot of vanilla cream here. Little hint of that citrus too. Good spicy finish. I mean, the problem with this is the price point at 115 bucks. I mean, you're getting, you know, it's it's five and three year old Kentucky bourbon for 115. dollars I know it's blended by Ebony Major, who's uh, an incredible blender, but for the money, I mean. Like peach and, and lemon, I feel like you can get in probably bourbons are a little bit cheaper. I'm trying to think of a of a whiskey that would have. I mean, even the um the Bartstown series, the Origin series, when you try the regular bourbon, it's very fruit forward. It may not be as peachy as this, but you get some really good fruits in the um, in the front. Yeah, it's it's a good solid sipper. This is something I would expect from Ebony Major. It's very balanced. It's got good flavors. It's just the price is tough on it uh, for 115 for that young whiskey. But I mean, this is the time we're in, guys. You know, it's, you know, part of this stuff is it's not just who blended it. It's marketing. Barrels are very expensive now, especially for blends. Um, I mean, I'm on the lookout for barrels for my own personal blend I want to come out with. And it's tough. It's like you can't find anything over like eight years old. It's nuts. You can't find you could barely find anything over six years old at this point. It's it's tough sledding. So I'm using every connection I can to try to get me at least one older barrel to add to the blend. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, if you guys like peach, if you like lemon, good spice, vanilla cream up front, just a good balanced bourbon. If you're a fan of Dread River and you just want to support the distillery, then I don't think you'll be disappointed in it. It's just that the 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 price point on it is tough. That's as, that's as honest as I could be there. It's good. It's not great. Price is tough, but a good but a fine blend. I think Ebony Major did a good did a good job with it. Um, Joe the sample guy says I'd eat peaches every day. <laughs> um, Buck fifty says kind of interesting that their rye has that lemon citrus note as well. All right, so maybe it's just. Maybe it's just something inherent with Dread River that they just have. Um, one of my favorite songs of all time, DC. Millions of peaches. 
<laughs> put them in a can. Uh, oh, no, this is a finished bourbon. Compete with Proper 12 Irish Apple, ADHD's new favorite. <laughs> yeah, ADHD releasing uh, the Proper 12. The Proper 12. I can't drink that flavored shit. Can't do it. Especially apple. Yeah. Because no matter what I taste, I'm just going to be like it's shit. But there's probably a lot of people that really enjoy it. This is this is good. I'm going to le let that kind of simmer over there. I'm going to simmer down. Um, all right. Um, all right. I'm going to get into the backbone mix, I think. I'm, I'm excited about the backbone here. So let's go with the... This is the American, you know, I'll save the American whiskey. Let's get into the decade down uncut next. Um, so, you know, to be transparent, uh, they sent me these bottles to try. I uh, have not tasted them yet. Why don't you have a pull tab, man? Oh, do I see one? I think I might see one. Crown Apple and Cran. Fa flavored whiskey is nasty. I missed the price earlier, him on the fence. Yeah, 115 bucks, one more cast. I don't know if that changes your mind at all, but it's not a it's not a cheap whiskey, unfortunately. All right. I got it. All right. So while I'm pouring this, America, that was in there tight. That's what she said. Oh, that has a nice color to it. Ooh, look at that. I think Backbone, although that they can be pricey, I think it's they make sneaky good stuff. They really do. Um, all right. <laughs> all right, so let's get into a couple of news stories here, guys, because there's, there's just like a lot of crazy shit going on. And I saw this story uh, come out. I don't know if you guys heard about this one, but here we go. This is the Oregon governor, Tina Kotek, speaking at the State Library of Oregon in Salem, January 31st. An Oregon government official reportedly resigned from his position amid a rare bourbon scandal. Steve Marks, executive director of the Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission, and five other, five other senior officials last week were accused of using their positions and connections to gain access to rare, expensive bottle of bourbons. I'll give you one guess what bottles they were trying to take for themselves. Um, because I believe the governor is entitled to have her own management team, I will honor that request. Mark sent in a letter. Um, he kind of admitted to it, I guess. On Wednesday, uh, let's see, the Associated Press report that the Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission concluded an internal investigation. The investigation found that Marks and five other agency officials had diverted rare bourbons for personal use. The officials were paying for the whiskeys, but these rare bottles, which included Pappy Van Winkle, 23-year, BTAC, and others, are essentially, <clears throat> are essentially impossible to find for the price they retail at. These bottles regularly resell for thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So again, again, another example of these guys going behind people's backs to get these rare bottles. I... It's like, I just, I can't, I can't take it anymore. When will the fucking madness end with the pappy shit? Like enough already. It is, it is okay whiskey. It is not amazing. Just like, stop it already. Now, the, the thing, the thing with me is, is I'm like wondering, are these guys being officials? Are they going to like, you know, are they, you know, putting it on their shelf and showing it off and, you know, you know, it becomes like a, uh. You know, it comes like it becomes like you know a dick measuring thing. Like I got pappy, I got this, I got that, I got that. You know, there's a lot of guys that do that shit. But then on top of that, you have these guys that, you know, because of their connections, are they were they planning to resell it for you know eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve grand, you know, whatever it may be. Is it, this is just another example of people doing shady shit to get anything from Buffalo Trace and Sazerac. I just I'm like I'm so fucking over it. But this, it is what it is. It, I mean, it's just, it's it's frustrating, man. I can't even. Oh, yeah. So Cheech. So Cheech said, I'm sure the same thing happened in Ohio. Um, and Cheech, you're absolutely right. Um, that's the reason why Ohio brought, that's why actually Sazerac left Ohio all those years ago for Buffalo Trace. I don't know if anybody from Ohio, if you guys remember hearing about this. 
But this is what was happening in Ohio. A lot of these guys were kind of diverting, you know, Pappy Van Winkles, you know, to their own like stash and uh, like barely any was making it out to the public. Um, that is why, you know, you have kind of the new regime. Once Jim Canepa came in, they made it like a state lottery. So none of that shit would happen. It's, it's crazy. And then I think that's why the whole thing shifted uh, from, you know, to state lotteries in, in most aspects. But it's, it's crazy, man. What people do for uh, for a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle is beyond me. Um, let me see here. Bribe judges. Who cares about Pappy? Give me those four O's as LEs. Dude, if I was in that position, screw Pappy. I'd be wanting the King or Heaven Hill 17. Yeah, but see, but that's the thing. Um, that That's the thing. It, it's more of those... Um, it comes down to education and, and all the great whiskeys that are out there for the money. And just, you know, most people just don't really care about that. They want what they know and they want what's what they think is the ultimate holy grail of a whiskey, you know? So I tell you, you know, you guys know I'm a sneaker head and the same things happen with sneakers, you know, certain sneakers come out and you miss, you miss the drops, you end up paying a shit ton of money on secondary. Oh, by the way, somebody was asking me what sneakers am I wearing tonight? So I have tonight my Air Jordan threes. I have my Air Jordan 3 Fire Reds going tonight. Um, yep, I love these. Nice Nike Air on the back. So, yeah, these are my, you know, same thing happens with uh, with sneakers. I don't think they resell. Some some sneakers resell for thousands, but they got to be really rare. I think the most expensive of, of uh, sneakers right now is the Dior. There's like a Dior pair of Nike Jordan 1s, I think, and those are going for like 8, 10 grand, 12 grand in some places. So yeah, those are the um, those are kind of like the main ones. Uh, speaking of Buffalo Trace, let's get into this next news story real quick. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the facade of Buffalo Trace because we're going to get into a little bit of a story here with Buffalo Trace actually doubling their capacity. Now this is something that they've been you know doing, working on for a little bit, but this is more of an exact. Um, uh, this is how they're doing it. So I'm just going to give you guys some details. Uh, this was just was announced on Thursday. Kentucky Distillery Buffalo Trace announced its new still house has been commissioned for test runs. It's a complete duplicate of Buffalo Trace's existing still. The new still is 40 feet tall and capable of producing 60,000 gallons a day. With the addition, Buffalo Trace will be able to double its current capacity. Um, this is part of the $1.2 billion expansion that you've heard so much about. Um, in addition to the new still, Buffalo Trace on Thursday unveiled an updated tour option if you want to take a look at the new still. Um, so, so let's see here. Beyond the still, the tour will showcase the other additions that have been made part of the expansion, including the new 22-foot-tall cookers, its new dry house, which can produce 12,000 pounds of dried grain per hour, and the distillery's 93,000-gallon fermenters. Um, the update, this is all part of the hard hat tour. It will last about 90 minutes, including a tasting after the tour. Um, all, all of Buffalo Trace's tours and tasting are complimentary and start and end in Buffalo Trace's 33,000 square foot visitor center, which was expanded in 2020. So, I mean, this, it's, 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 it's up and running guys. I mean, we're, we're talking a lot of doubling the production. They're going to be doing some now again, where everyone is like, okay, we should see more whiskey, but. If they're just doing test runs now, guys, this shit has to age. So now in like seven, eight, nine, ten years, if we're still seeing not a lot of Buffalo Trace on the shelf, if the demand for it is still that much from everybody in that amount of time, it'll be interesting to see if we do see more stuff on the shelf. It's But we, we'll never know until we get there. Um, so uh, it's going to be a lot of fireball out there, guys. I'm just saying a lot of fucking fireball. <laughs> a lot of fireball. A lot of Buffalo Trace. I, I just, uh, you know, listen, all I want is to see more Eagle Rare again. I just want to, I think Eagle Rare is like the best shit they make. 10-year-old bourbon for that price. Just bring bring me some, bring back some Eagle Rare. I Listen, I would love Stag, Stag Jr. or formerly Stag Jr. But, you know, that stuff's even, you know, even harder to get. But just, I just want the days when Eagle Rare is back on the shelf. So I could just walk in, get a nice bottle of Eagle Rare. And drink some cherry cola bourbon all day long. I love it. I love Eagle Rare. I think it's one of the best things they make, and you can't get it anymore. So just sucks. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's grape big league too, David. I totally agree. That's what I want to see on the shelf again. Please bring it back. All right. Um, you know, besides, I mean, you have E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof and some of the other ones that are really good. But I'm talking like everyday sippers. Man, Eagle Wear 10, it's hard to beat, you know, from a product from Buffalo Trace. Um, all right. Let's see. What else do we got here? Look at look at this thing. All you scotch heads out there. Yeah, that's right. That bottle of McAllen. No joke. Um, went for a quarter million dollars. So would you rather have a quarter million dollars or a bottle of scotch? This incredibly rare McAllen sold for a quarter of a million dollars. I'm talking $250,000. This is the McAllen Distill Your Own World New York Single Cask Edition. Um, blowing away its pre-sale estimate of thirty dollars to $80,000. This particular bottle is one of only two bottles created of Distill Your World New York Single Cask Edition, and the second bottle will be kept in the McAllen Archive, making the winner of the auction the only consumer in the world to have this bottling. Um, as you guys can see, the beautiful presentation box. Um, I don't even know what, what are the stats on this whiskey. Single cask whiskey from European Oak Sherry Punchin. The whiskey was distilled in 2002 and bottled at cast strength. Uh, 55% ABV. So it's, you know, slightly over 20 years old. Other highlights in the auction included a bottle of McAllen 52-year-old, which sold for 62000 McAllen 50, which sold for 68000 Additionally, two bottles of Pappy Van Winkle 23 sold for $37,500 each. These are people with just fucking money to burn and have no, have no idea what they're drinking. This is going to go in a cabinet and collect dust so they could show all their rich friends, oh, I have a Pappy Van Winkle 23. I only paid 37000 for it. It was an absolute bargain. <laughs> let me tie my sweater around my fucking, you know, let me tie my sweater around my shirt. Oh, my God. I can't. That's insane. That's an insane amount of money. Oh, my gosh. I paid 60 bucks for a pour of McCallum 30, says Adam Shelton. All right. Get a pour. I'll take six, but I accept a deep case discount. Just show the sample guy. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, slowly untying my sweater right now. Yeah, DC, put that shit away. All right. Before we get into some more stuff, let's try this backbone. All right. So the details on this backbone, this is the decade down uncut. Uh, it's a straight bourbon where they used a combination of their finest honey barrels between five and seven years old. 25% of the bourbon used had been in sherry barrels for 12 months. Our first batch of Backbone Uncut, our first product, was released in December 2010. That's the reason for this special anniversary edition. We plan to do a new decade down release every year going forward. Uh, 110 proof, um, 74 corn, 21% uh, percent rye, 5% malted barley, so all the barrels are 21% MGP. Uh, and yeah, let's 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 go for it. Have not tried this yet. Muffy, please go get my bottle of Pappy 23. I would like to have it with my waffles this morning. Uh, there we go. There's the backbone. Decade down, uncut. So Sherry, did not know Sherry was a part of this blend. Jason, you said you haven't tried Backbone Rye, Source from Dickel, right? No, I have not tried that yet, Kenneth. That's a pretty good pour, says Dusty Dan Whiskey Reviews. Oh, man, you get the sherry. Whoo. Hey, Tony Bag of Donuts is here. First super chat of the night. Thank you so much, Tony. Says it's great to be back after No Whiskey January and five weeks in Chile. I'm um, drinking some straight wheat whiskeys tonight from Old Elk and Traverse City Whiskey Company. Nice to see you again, Tony Bagger Donuts. Hope you enjoyed your trip. Dude, Ch Chile, there's nothing good like a good Chilean wine. I'm like not a big wine guy, but there's something about Chilean wine. All the good wine you know just stains the shit out of your teeth. That's the good, that's the good stuff. <laughs> Do you have any Grey Poupon? No, but I have Pappy 23. Would you like to pour that on your sandwich? Um. Oh man, this is uh, yeah. The sherry definitely comes through on here. Um, the the backbone we did was a huge sherry finish. The O sherry uh, pick that we did for the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club. 
wow, this is super rich, deep, decadent, raisin, chocolate. Man, tons of cinnamon and clove. Man, the nose is fantastic. Let's try it. Ooh, that's a nice little pour there. Nothing wrong with that. You get like the old sherry oak influence right on the very back end of that one. A lot of uh, a lot of cinnamon. I spy an NBC bottle over your left shoulder. Yeah, this is the uh, ADHD whiskey stuff and whiskey um, uh, blend that they or single brow that they picked. Love that bottle. Rod Miles says, sorry I'm delayed listening, but we're working on getting the heavy corks back. I tell Danny Bartai I want to be able to defend myself with my whiskey corks. <laughs> I mean, Ron, I mean, I don't mind the the lighter corks. Just like I've I've had more of them like come off. So I don't know if it's like just like the glue is just keeps is just not adhering to the top of the cork, but they just keep coming off. I don't, I don't know, man. This starts off all bourbon, all bourbon, gingerbread. There's like this chocolate covered almond note that hits right in the middle palate. And then the sherry kicks in, the raisin, a little bit of chocolate, more of that nuttiness character comes through as well. The cinnamon, the clove, a little bit of baking spice in the back end. That's a nice little sipper. It, I think for me, it's drinking under 110 proof. Um, it's drinking, it seems to be below its proof point a little bit. Yeah, that sherry is all up in there, all up and through it. It's definitely not over sherry at all. It has just enough sherry to keep things interesting, but you don't lose the, you know, no pun intended, but the backbone of the bourbon. Um, it still comes through. You still get all the NGP goodness in here. The sherry cask finishing just kind of adds to it. That's a, it's got a good spice too from that 21% MGP. So it's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that ride. All right, let's go to another um, ADHD. Jason, don't play no bitch ass core covers. That's right, ADHD. The price, uh, the price of whiskey deserves a good cork. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Get a premium price. You want a premium cork, man. Like you can't have. Listen, you can't have ADHD whiskey doing a review. And then he go. He wants to say America on the cork, and then all he gets is the plastic top. That is not good for whiskey too. Just saying, you can't have the world stop whiskey taster pull a cork off, and all he gets is the top of it without the cork. Come on, we're better than that. Um, all right, let's go into a couple of other news stories here, which is um, the release of Barrel Bourbon, the, the the next batch in line. We are looking at batch number. 34 uh, blending whiskeys aged 6 to 15 years from three different states. So um, as you guys you know, know with Barrel Craft Whiskey, um, this was distilled in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana, ranging from, excuse me, ranging from 6 to 15 years of age. Barrels started with high corn 8-year-old barrels as the base. Then they added high rye barrels and finished by mixing in the 10 and 15-year-old barrels. Uh, it's 114.62 proof. Uh, will sell for the suggested retail price of $90. Um, I don't know if any of you guys had batch 33. Batch 33 almost made my top 10 last year. It was it was that good. So I'm hoping for big things from 34. Um, so if you guys like barrel craft spirits, 90 bucks, pretty good age statements on it. So I, I hope to see more of that. And then we have this whiskey right here, Woodford Reserve, coming out of the gate. Uh, now, if you guys missed it last weekend, uh, Elizabeth McCall was just named Master Distiller. Uh, you know, after after a few years underneath uh, Chris Morris, and they are they're they're kind of giving a nod to the olden days of whiskey making with its latest Master's Collection release called Historic Barrel Entry Proof. As you see, the 18th, this is the 18th uh, limited edition series release. 
So uh, Woodford Reserve says, uh, Chris Morris called upon the rich history of Kentucky bourbon and their own ingredients for inspiration. This was made available. Let's see here. The latest release in Woodford's is named Historic Barrel Entry due to the fact that the whiskey entered the barrel at only 100 proof. In the modern day, whiskey usually enters the barrel at around 125, but in the 19th century, the standard was 100 to 103 proof. Woodford Reserve is giving a nod to the olden days with this release. Um, so let me see here. Bottled at 90.4 proof, of course, like everything Woodford does. Uh, this is available select markets at a retail price of $130. Um, so some tasting notes include an alluring medley of vanilla bean and dried apple, dusted with nutmeg, clove, and cinnamon, hints of cocoa, roasted coffee, and hazelnut. Um, berry fruits, hints of leather, coffee, baking spice, all kind of lead into a lingering finish of charred oak leather and orange oil. Okay. So... I, I like this for a release from Woodford Reserve. I'm actually trying to find one of those. Uh, but, but I don't know what you guys think about it. I know it's 90.4 proof, but I'm I'm into that. You know why? Because it's not just some weird mash bill they use. I think, I th personally, I think that going in a barrel that low at 100 proof, I just want to taste something that goes in that low. Now, you can make the argument that Michter's, you know, Michter's does go in the barrel at 104 I think which is the lowest right now from you know one of the a uh, current distillery uh going in the barrel um you know at that lowest entry proof but to kind of taste something at a hundred entry proof so for just so you guys know usually when you don't have a normal entry proof when you're going into like heaven hill for for example they're going into the barrel at 125 um now, when you do that and it comes out like to make you know whatever whiskey they're making if it's a lower proof point you got to add water after the fact. Watering, uh, adding the water before you go into the barrel uh, and proofing it down before you go in the barrel is what actually helps break down some of the uh, uh, some of the the barrel rich components and it kind of breaks down the sugars a little bit more. It and it just it just makes for a little bit more of an elegant whiskey. I think that's why Wilderness Trail, Peerless, and some of those brands that you guys know and love. Uh, have such a flavorful whiskey for you know for the age. I think that's why Michter's, even though their stuff is pretty young in the regular you know bottles, um, can have a pretty good flavorful whiskey. Um, but yeah, more water or alcohol evaporates at lower entry proof. Guess it depends on the barrel and rickhouse. Yeah, do you see all that's gonna? I'm sure going in at that low entry proof means a specific spot for aging in a rickhouse. But all but but bringing water into the fold in the beginning um, is what really like breaks down. Um, let's see here. Uh, it it just brings a sweeter characteristic to to the whiskey because you're just breaking down more of those those uh, like the lignin layers of the barrel. It gets into those second those secondary uh, layers of the barrel, breaks it all a little bit down with the water in there. Um, yeah, you're probably going to end up with a lower proof product, of course. Um, just like if you see Peerless, you see the Peerless single barrels. I mean, none of those are really over 110 proof normally because they're going in the barrel at a low entry proof. And as it ages, you may go up a tick, you may go down a tick, but you get a sweeter profile. And I think to try, I mean, Woodford's already inherently sweet, but I don't know. I'm interested in that bottle. I'll get one. You'll probably see a review soon, but I'm not paying any more than 130 for it. Normally, normally I'm pretty disappointed in Woodford Masters collections, but I'm gonna roll the dice again. I'm gonna roll the dice again. Um, let's see. Firm negative Jason says Blaine too much money. Yeah, uh, I mean I get it, I get it. But for me, being the bourbon nerd I am, I want to taste Woodford at that low entry proof because I I just want to. So hopefully I could uh, find one of those. Um, is this so they can call it barrel proof or just use less water? <laughs> this is Justin Jenkins. Um, too bad those Woodfords are 130 bucks. Not even remotely worth that. Yeah, William, I agree. It's not worth 130 bucks, especially at 90.4 proof. It sucks. But unfortunately, that's what it is to get your hands on one of those. Um, man, the sherry is really come. This is a really nice whiskey. I'm digging this one. Mmm. That sherry is banging. All right, next up from Backbone is their Big Bash. This is a uh, a newer one. 
I'm going to have to work on uh, getting this open again here. I should have pre-opened these, but uh, let's see here. Masters equals experimental. Yeah, it's experimental ham turkey, but, you know, there, there comes a point where why am I paying a premium for something that's experimental that might taste like shit? I'm just saying. I, but that's what whiskey is these days, guys. You got to you gotta remember. You know, there's a, there's a there's someone that's willing to buy something to taste something different, like this guy. You know, but I'll I'll take the hit for you guys. I'll buy it, I'll try it, and I'll tell you if it's worth it or not. And then you could go out and find it if you want. Another tight cork here. America, big America there. All right, this is the Backbone Big Bash. This is something that they've been working on for over a year, working on this uh, this product. I'll give you guys the stats here. Um, let's see here. This is, we set out to create a whiskey that had a touch of fruitiness and a slightly exotic sweetness. Over 90% of the blend, over 90% of this blend consists of whiskeys that have been in finishing barrels for between six months and two years. We've spent years perfecting our whiskey finishing skills, and this blend is a celebration of everything we learned. So we're not just looking at a new whiskey here. We're looking at a blend of various finishes, something that they do with their fusion picks, if you guys have ever seen that. Uh, the fusion blends that they do uh, that are also single barrels uh, are kind of a mixture of these different types of finished whiskeys that they utilize. So um, this is all, again, this is Indiana. Uh, age 62 months. So the 62 months is the youngest whiskey in here. Um, honed batch of whiskeys. It really actually doesn't give you a, a breakdown of exactly what they used here. But here's the, you talk about America. Look at that label. Big backbone, big bash. If you like it, you like it. Let's see. Yeah, if you like it, you like it. I mean, I'm sure he's talking a little bit about the uh, the Woodford. Might not like it. I might like it. We'll see. Oh, wow. Yeah, this there's a lot of caramel apple in this that I'm picking up. This blend is a blend of all the finished barrels we didn't think worked as single barrels, <laughs> says Adam Dorman. I mean, there's something to be said there. I think this is going to become a trend this year. I think I said that in the beginning of the year. People taking a bunch of different blends and putting them together to try to make something crazy and unique. It's going to work or it's not going to work. This one, at least on the nose, is working nice. Um, hey, Black Bourbon family's in the house. How you doing, guys? Nice to see you. Top Shelf Dustin's here. Joseph Brazier's here. What's going on? Um, Man, I can't get over the caramel apple. It is the Caramel apple is strong with this one. So just so you guys are aware, this is not a bourbon. This is an American whiskey. So this is a blend of straight whiskeys. So a little bit of pear. This is very bright, very fruity. And I mean, I, I think I would expect that with such a, a blend of, you know, who knows what's in here. Uh, Dusty Dan, I know you reviewed this. Did Do you know exactly what finishes they use? Was that revealed? Because I could not find anything about what's in this blend. All right, let's try this one, guys. I'm going to need another sip of that. That first sip was weird. Hey, what's up, old man Joe? I'm not digging that at all. <laughs> there is something very. What is that flavor? I, I I do not dig that at all. I don't know. From my palate, it's giving me a very is it is it is it soapy? There 
there's something really just off for me on this. No, like I told you guys, these send me, you know, they sent me these bottles to review. And, you know, I'm going to be honest. I am not liking this one. Cherry rum port and so on, but have but many have been non-traditional like Isla Scotch, Imperial Stout, Amaro, Grand Marnier, tequila, and banana brandy finishes. Are you see all of that in this one bottle? Is that right? Yeah, Joe, it's not my Glenn. Um, Joseph Bredo says, thank you for pointing me in the direction of that barrel Madeira. Gonna drink the ass out of that. <laughs> Glad you're enjoying that, Joseph. This is not working for me, guys. I don't know what that flavor is that's in here, but it's... Uh, I found on the Whiskey Wash website, not sure of the validity. I mean, those guys pretty much know their stuff. Um, if they... If they seriously use all those finishes, it's it's not working. It's very disconnected. I think there's stuff fighting each other. It's like a it's like almost like a it's got this little hint of tropical, like this sugar tropical note on the back end. But the tropical fruit, it's like it was sitting in the sun too long. And it's just, there's something very off to it. And I'm, I'm not, yeah, I can't, yeah. I'm not a fan of that. And this, I love. This is fucking delicious. I'm going to crush the shit out of this bottle. But that big bash, I think there's just too much. I think they threw the kitchen sink at a blend and hoped it would stick. It's just not, it is not working for me. Whiskey Mountains, congrats for moving on to Matt Madness. Killer, killer job. Awesome. Um, yeah, my time, I think I'm I'm think I'm going in about I think a few weeks. I have some blinds that I'm doing tonight to help me kind of train over the weekend. I'll have a blind I'm doing next week here uh, live with uh, Eric Desmarius. I think he sent me a couple blinds to do. I need to test myself with the 30-second rule. I mean, I keep – I'll see if it opens up, guys, but I am not liking the flavors in that. It's just – there's just too many things fighting each other for me. It's just – it's off. If there is, like, tequila and all that stuff in it, it's just too much. It's not working. You know, for me, it might work for somebody. It was not working for me. All right, let's get into the next one here, which is the K Lukes. These have gotten a lot of traction lately, um, especially with um, you have Fred Minnick putting one of these in uh, his. Uh, I forgot what it made. I think it's like its top. Um, I mean this this made his top one hundred. I can't remember the exact name of it. Um. So let's see here. Yeah, K. Luke Whiskey kind of made its fanfare from Fred Minnick. Posted as his top 100 bottles of 2022. New blenders like K. Luke and Nassif enter the market with blends worthy of every whiskey lover's attention. Uh, so these are from owners Jonathan and Jennifer Mezzano. They own a uh, a liquor store, uh, Mezzano's Fine Wine and Spirits. Uh, they are located in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and they have basically. I mean, these guys have done, you know, I can't even, the amount of barrel picks that they've done have been insane for their store. And um, so they decided to come up with their own blend and it's, it's unique. So this is a, this is a 36% rye. Um, let's see. Well, what batches do I have here? I have batch number two and I have batch number two. So this is the. I have a hundred proof, and I have the the uh, small batch barrel proof here. The barrel proof is one hundred nineteen point one. The hundred proof is one hundred proof. It's a high and low rye mash bill. Um, so when you're looking at this, 
So it's a 36% rye from both Indiana and Kentucky. Each blend is a very small batch, meticulously blended, and then ran through a series of blind tasting rounds before the final blend is decided. Once the final blend is decided, the bourbon is bottled non-chill filtered at Bartson Bourbon Company in Kentucky. Okay. So that's the 100 proofer. Um, so let's get into these. Have you guys heard of K. Luke? Any, any, any of you guys know uh, Maisano's Fine Wine and Spirits? Um, batch two made the top 25, the barrel proof. Well, that's what I have here. So let's see how good it is. Let's pour this. I'm going to let these open up a little bit. Now, if these were in the top 25 with all those whiskeys Fred Minnick picked, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of Fred. Like the, you know, love the dude, but you know, sometimes our palates do not jive. But we'll see what he says about these. But I've heard really good things about these blends. These just went live on Sealbox today, but it's batch three. Um, uh, Master Jump says we love their picks and have tried both batch one and two. Just ordered three, says Katie Turk. Awesome. Okay. Jonathan has a great palate. From what from what I've heard. His palate and all the barrels that they picked have been nothing short of outrageous. So, yeah, batch three dropped on um, dropped on Sealbox uh, today. Um, I haven't tried batch three, but I have batch two here. Been kind of meaning to get to these. So, um, so let's get into the. I'll start with the hundred proof first, of course. Oh, off the bat, I'm I'm liking this nose. This is giving me those like butterscotchy toffee vibes. Oh, yes. I like that. Uh, let me see here. So this is, okay, that's the barrel proof. Um, okay. It's like this beautiful like toffee orange combination. A lot of vanilla. Very sugary sweet. Almost get a little hint of bubble gum in here too. Wow. That is a really, you know what it reminds me of a little bit? And maybe because I was talking to Pop and don't watch him before this, but he was saying that he would put these blends up with old Carters. Um, it reminds me a little bit of the old Carter blends. Um, like the sweetness of them and some of the notes that I'm getting here. Yeah, guys, if you have not yet, please hit the like button. Appreciate it. 400 people in the chat. Cheers. Let's uh, try the 100 proofer. Ooh. Oh. That is, um, that is, that's really nice. This thing kind of takes you through a little bit of everything here, guys. It's a lot sweet up front. You get you get that again, that like that orange toffee note. It then it turns into like a Werther's original candy. And then all of a sudden it hits with this like this really just it's a hundred proof, so it's not like a ton of spice, but there's enough there to just keep things interesting. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's citrusy, it's it's a little bit sugary sweet, a little bit of powdered sugar on top as well. There's a bright fruit note in there. It might be like a little bit of a strawberries and cream type thing going on. Damn. That that's nice. That is a really well blended whiskey. That's really nice. Um for a hundred proof whiskey, it's Man, I don't know. What are the retails on these things? Let me see here. So the 100 proof is 80 bucks. See, that's where... Like for me, I would buy this for 100 because you could tell that there was some really good blending done here. But, you know, for the average drinker, you know, they're going to be like, well, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to go buy Evan Williams Ball and Bond for, you know, $17. And I get it. But there's something to be said about, you know, a, a meticulously blended product that works out. Blending is not easy. 
So you're, you know, you got to source barrels. I'm in the midst of that right now, trying to find barrels and seeing how expensive it is. It is not easy, guys. Just it's expensive. And, you know, I know people love to see the price point and just shit on it immediately. But you guys have no idea what goes into building a blend um, or building like sourcing barrels and how much it could cost. Um, you know, and I get that. I, I think people have a threshold they want to spend on whiskey and that's completely personal and, you know, it's completely subjective. But like for me, this for a hundred proof bourbon, this is really nice. Yeah, it's, yeah, Chris Buzalencia. I wouldn't say this is for the average drinker. This is for the whiskey geek, whiskey nerd who wants to try just something different and is willing to pay the price for it. But I'm telling you, that 100 proof is, is kind of worth it. It's nice. All right, now I'm really excited to try the cast strength. So the cast strength, K. Luke, um, small batch barrel strength. Again, high rye, low rye blend. This is this particular batch is 119.1 proof. Let's uh, let's see what we get here with this one. Um, wow, this this reminds me of everything in the in the first in the hundred proofer. Just everything just amped up. This has way more caramel in it, though. This I was getting um, more of that the toffee and the orange. This is a deep, richer caramel here. Man, it's fruit forward. That toffee is still there, but it almost is like a burnt toffee. Like it was just like, you know, left in the oven a little too long. Man, creme brulee for days. Yeah, this totally, dude, pop them. I, I totally see why this would like jive with like old Carter for you. It, it has that level of sweetness to it. And creme brulee all day long, all day long. Caramel, a little bit of a little bit of a, of a fruit characteristic there. I'm, I'm going to lean towards, I'm not going to say strawberry like I was getting here. This might get into more of a raspberry realm. I'm getting like a blueberry muffin like note in here. The hell is that coming from? Ooh. All right, let's try it. Might need a little sip of that. Okay, there it is. The first sip, I'm like, where where the flavor go? The second sip, here it is. The toffee, the creme brulee, the deep rich caramel, that like burnt toffee note. Get a little bit of smoke char, a little bit of barrel char right on the back end of it. Good spice to it. Damn. That might be the best thing I've tried tonight so far. I mean, I, I think this backbone, uh, not that one, this one. I'm going to bring you to the back, dude. This backbone is is up there tonight, too. But these, these three are probably the top three I've tried tonight out of everything. Uh, T-Bone, I don't, I don't know if uh, Sealbox ships to you, but it's available on Sealbox right now. You could buy it. Um, I might have to ask somebody to buy it for me through Sealbox. Sealbox has not shipped to Ohio. So I might have to grab uh, one of each of these because these are good. Um, this is this falls in line with a profile that I love personally. I love the creamy sweetness. I love the toffee, the creme brulee aspects to it, little punch of a uh, dark fruit to it. And then it rounds out with this really nice lingering spicy finish. This is beautifully blended. These are two really nice blended whiskeys. I could see why this, these are rated so high. Um. I obviously like the cast strength over the 100 proofer, but if you don't like to drink something so high proof, this 100 proofer is a really balanced whiskey. Was not expecting to love these as much as I'm loving them right now. Um, these are really good. Um, shit. Jonathan, Maisano, um, this absolutely amazing job on this. Really, really good. Uh, these are these are great. These are great whiskeys. Um, I'm, I hope to get more and I hope to, I'm, I'm going to seek out some bottles if I can. Um, yes, Terrence. Yeah, it's, it's sourced. You're looking at a source high rye 
and a source low rye uh, bourbons that are blended together uh, to make these. But they're very well blended. There's no off flavors. There's nothing fighting with each other. It's very well um, constructed. You have everything in the front of the palate that you need. The mid palate hits with a lot of sweetness. And then the back end ends with just like a nice lingering finish. And that's all you can ask. Now, the cast strength clocks in here at 100 bucks. So you have 80 bucks for the 100 proof and you have 100 for the cast strength. Is that a steep price point for probably young whiskeys in here? Yes. Um, but again, guys, this is this is where we are in whiskey right now. Um, and I can tell you, again, from personal experience, it is tough finding affordable barrels to blend with these days, especially finding ones that are good ages. So the fact that they found whatever barrels they could and blended two whiskeys this good is pretty impressive. Uh, so cheers to K. Luke. Oh, my gosh. And it's getting better and better. I go, man, I'm pouring more of that. Fucking A. Dude. It's good. It's good shit. I mean, this is, this is, if I wanted to make a blend, this is what I would hope it would be. And, you know, K. Luke beat me to it. <laughs> like, you know, just the toffee, the creme brulee, a little bit of dark fruit, a little bit of a lingering finish. I do wish it had a little bit of a longer finish. That's probably the only knock I could give it. But, man, this thing is so crushable, even at cast strength. I think anybody would love it. It's that good. Damn it, Jason. I passed in the show notes when I got the email from Blake today. And now I just bought the cast strength based on your review. Cheers, everyone. Hey, 210, buy one for me, dude, and then ship it to me because I can't get it in Ohio. <laughs> I'm just saying. But get me one of each, and I'll reimburse you. <laughs> Please. Yeah, this is good. Um. Oh, Patrick Cohen just did the – oh, yeah, the four-gate ride, Patrick. That's a little bit of another level in this. I'm just – you did not make a bad decision, Patrick. I'm just telling you. Um. Yeah, that's good. That's really good shit. I dig it. All right, K. Luke, winners in my book. Uh, they sent me these samples. Uh, again, being full transparent with you guys, um, did not expect much, and I was very thoroughly surprised at how good those were, uh, both of them. So great job there. All right, before – now I have a blind tasting challenge to do tonight that we're going get, to gonna get through. But before we do that, let's go into a couple of uh, new labels that I saw here on the TTV. What is a local brand here right in Ohio? It's Watershed. Watershed coming out with their uncut, unfiltered straight bourbon whiskey, aged four years. It's going to be a limited release. It says 61.1% ABV. I'm not sure if that's for position only or not, but um, I'm excited for that one. I think Watershed has made huge strides in their, uh, their whiskey production, their bourbon making. I think going from... Uh, that four grain with spelt that they were using into a more traditional, uh, to a traditional bourbon mash bill using corn, rye, and malted barley. I think changed it for everything. I think they're getting some really unique flavors out of their barrels, and I can't wait to to taste that. So Watershed, good job on that one. Uh, Mythology, Mythology looks like they're coming out with some different finished whiskeys. Uh, we have a straight bourbon finished in Jamaican rum. Uh, we have a straight bourbon finish in Tawny Port Wine, and we have straight bourbon finish in Sauternes Wine Barrels. Um, these are unique limited release single barrels offered exclusively for your enjoyment. I don't know if you guys know of uh, Mythology, but they, they're making some pretty good stuff. I think they're still pretty much sourcing and then doing some finishing, but uh, they're making some great shit. Uh, next up, Heaven's Door. You guys know about the Heaven's Door 10-year uh, whiskeys, that they, uh, the 10-year bourbons that they've been sourcing and putting together. Some of them have been fantastic, I got to say. Very, very surprised at how good those Heaven's Door 10 years are, the decade uh, decade series. This one is a 10-year, if you look right here, we got a rye whiskey. Boop, boop. Uh, straight rye whiskey coming in hot. Um, so 100 proof straight rye whiskey, 10 years old. I would imagine that has to be maybe the Dickel rye. Just saying, could be. Uh, Horse Soldier, one of the best, most respected um, whiskey brands um, here in Ohio. Uh, again, these were these th this brand. You know, means this is the Co Commanders Select Bourbon Whiskey. 
made for legendary men, legendary spirits. Um, they are coming out with a straight bourbon whiskey finished in tawny port casks. I hope that's the proof, 110 proof. If that is a 110 proof port finished straight bourbon whiskey from Horse Soldier, I'm all over that. I can't wait to try that one. Uh, I don't know what you guys think about Horse Soldier, uh, the story behind them. Um, I, I think, you know, I can't wait to try what they got going on. I got to have them on the channel, those guys, I think. If I would, you guys be, you know, interested in, in getting Horse Soldier on? So let me know in the chat. Um, Old Elk looks like they're going to be coming out with another cigar cut. The straight bourbon whiskey finished in Armagnac, Sherry, and Port Barrels, 110 proof. Looks like Old Elk is kind of like, all right, Joseph Magnus, we could do that shit too. I got you. I think uh, cigar blend, cigar whiskey, cigar, whatever it's going to be, that could be another trend we start seeing from a lot of different distilleries in 2023 as well. Um, it just, it all kind of, I, I think, uh, between all the multiple finishing, I think cigar blends is, is something that is a, uh, a very marketable type of blend that people want. They hear cigar blend and whether you drink cigars or not, you hear cigar blend, you kind of just think deep, dark, rich, uh, and, and smoky. And you, you kind of want to taste that in whiskey. Um, let's see here. Giddy up. I love the horse soldier cash rank. Oh shit. I know where my next tax return is going. Says William Hall. Yeah, that'd be cool. To have, and you need to have horse soldier on. I'll reach out to them. Whiskey mountains. Just cause you said it. Absolutely. To watch horse soldier on YouTube. What makes it a cigar blend? Uh, ben Dram and cigar blend. Historically, if you look at Joseph Magnus kind of doing the first one is a blend of Armagnac, Sherry and port finishes blended together. Those those three types of liqueurs, spirits, whatever you want to call them, whiskeys are made to pair with a cigar singularly. Armagnac, sherry, port, you can get into brandy as well. So finishing some different bourbons with those different finishes and then blending them together gives you the cigar blend. Uh, so Old Elk coming out with their cigar cut, which I think is a kind of cool name. You know, you cut a cigar and you have your cigar cut. Um, like Bourbon Pursuit said, cigar blend can be anything. There's no regulation to it. Yeah, cigar blend is essentially a marketing term. That's that's all it is. It's kind of like what small batch is. Cigar, remember guys, small batch has no official designation. You see small batch on a barrel or a, I'm sorry, small batch on a bottle. That thing could be 300 barrels, 1,000 barrels. It could be... Two barrels. Small batch doesn't mean shit. It's a marketing term. That's all it is. Um, just like barrel proof. Barrel proof has no official designation. Um, if you guys have ever had Rebel or Ezra Castrang picks, when you taste those at, at Lux Row, they're 128, 129 proof. That's the official barrel proof. They proof it down to 120, then bottle it, and then still call it barrel proof. So when you see barrel proof, it might not ever be the true barrel proof, but also small batch is a relative term. It's, it's bullshit. It's either, it could be two, three barrels, or it could be a thousand barrels uh, for small batch. It's all marketing. So there you go. Um, and knowing is half the battle. That's right. Um, I like the Vietnamese version called whores, whore soldier military. <laughs> Fucking Cohen's fucking killing me. Holy shit, we got 443 people in the chat. Definitely hit that like button while you're here, guys. Um, okay. One other uh, you know, thing that came up here that I saw is this one right here. Whistle pig. Sun toasted from 91.4 million miles away. This is the summer stock whiskey that they apparently did with Pit Viper. It's a limited edition. Now you guys tell me in the chat what the hell Pit Viper is. I have no idea what Pit Viper is. Apparently, Pit Viper is like a sunglasses, like um, apparel, you know, sunglass apparel, uh, you know, website. And they make uh, all these fancy sunglasses and clothing and all this other stuff. I tell you what, Whistle Pig might be the king of collaborations. <laughs> I'd put like Burst Sound Bourbon Company up there, Whistle Pig. The only thing with Whistle Pig is you're going to have to pay like $800 to get that bottle, whatever it is. 
Um, let me let me go here. Uh, so this is the other label. Small batch. This is a Solara aged. No, it's not a typo. It says here small batch Solara aged SPF 2000. I, I don't know what that means. It's just a Solara aged whiskey. Um, is this is this trend worse than celebrity whiskey? Uh, big in oh, big in Australia. Okay, that's good to know. So Pit Viper is big in Australia. Safety glasses. Okay. Um, Macho Man shade. Yes, when I looked them up online, that the shades look like old Macho Man shades. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Look, yeah, Macho Man. Like, put them on, go wrestle. A flying elbow off the top turnbuckle. Love it. Um, is Doc Swinson's alter ego considered a cigar blend? They don't label it as such, but I mean, it could be. You know, it could be. High school kids always rocking the pit vipers. Okay, so it's a. I'm just out of touch. I don't know what the hell Pit Viper is. Uh, the spelling on Solara is wrong, though. So it actually, so is it actually Solara? I would, I would imagine it is Aiden. Um, 91.4 million miles. So the distance from Earth to the Sun. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? I think so because Mark Emenecker. That's exactly what the marketing is. Um, it says it's sun soaked. So that is the distance to the Sun. So that makes sense if you're looking at the mileage. So. Um, look at that shit, making you think. Um, Jason, do Kermit impersonating Macho Man. Uh, okay, let me let me see how uh, Kermit would do Macho Man. Uh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> ooh, yeah, piggy. Ooh, yeah, piggy. I'm going to take down George the Animal Steel. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that was... Uh... That was both wonderful and horrible. Hope you guys are still tuning in after that mess. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Man, what else do we got going on here, guys? Um, trying to think. Uh I think I think we're kind of dude. I'm I'm guys, I'm still I am still I'm still all geeked out for this release right here. The Wild Turkey Generations. Oh my god, I, I cannot wait for this release. So if you guys have not heard about this one, Wild Turkey Generations, Jimmy, Eddie, and Bruce Russell coming together to make this beautiful whiskey. The spirit is a blend of hand-selected 9, 12, 14, and 15-year-old bourbons, each one representing their individual tastes. Some of them are honeyed and vanilla. Together, it's uh, some are bold and complex. Together, it's a family portrait in a whiskey. Oh my god, look at the three feathers. You have Jimmy, you have um, Eddie, and then there's Bruce. I mean, out of all the out of all the wild turkey releases that are gonna that are coming out, you have the Master's Keep, uh, the Voyage or the Voyager. I forgot what it's called. That's the rum finish Master's Keep. That one I'm not that excited about. I mean, yeah, I'll get it because I'm a turkey guy and I love Master's Keeps. I don't expect a lot from that one, but. Then you have the Camp Nelson Rick House F, which I'm, which I'm really excited for. The single Rick House, I'm very excited for that one because F had some of the, the the most delicious barrels I've had. But that generations, I mean, the marketing may be getting me. We're talking about marketing, but like the three of them together on one bottle, that might be like a buy it and back it up like type situation where I'm going to want multiples of that one. Oh my god, I can't, I can't with that shit. It's just it's it's too it's too good. It is too good. All right, let me grab this here. So uh let me get to the comments here. Limited turkey will never see. Take my money now. Look at the tree tree feeders. What? <laughs> uh anyone else say they need to take a break from bourbon most days around 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. rolls around? <laughs> it's kind of what happens. Jimmy has the biggest feather. Cheech. Wink wink, buddy. I know what you mean. Um, time to remortgage the house. Dang, that'd be awesome. Education, impersonation, entertainment at its best. Yeah, you know, a little education, little impersonation. I do a lot of different voices. Do Kermit. If you guys have not seen me, do some other ones. Kermit is, uh, Kermit's one of my favorites. Um, all right. In my hand is a blind tasting challenge. Well, he kind of said, do what you want with it. But I'm going to try to get real granular here, guys. You're going to see me fail miserably right now. 
I'm going to try to call out proof. I'm going to try to call out distillery. I'm going to try to call out everything I can here. Try to try to get myself ready for Matt Madness. Um, this is a blind tasting sent by Eric Sawyer. That's right. The 2022 Blend Again and Champion sent me a blind tasting of some single barrels he had. He said, do what you want with it. With with uh, mash, with uh, Matt Madness coming up, I figured, let's see how in the weeds I can get with these. Let's see how well I do. This, uh, this, this, yeah, the Valley Girl voice. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done that in a while. I feel like I got to get, like, really tipsy to do the Valley Girl voice. Like, you know, you know, I bet one of them is turkey. Yeah, Eric Sawyer, you. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to need more of that. So let's see how terrible or good I do. Now, again, I'm not going to have the whole timer thing on me um, like I would in Matt Madness. Uh, I think I'm going to save that for next week. Uh, but I am going to just kind of just take my hand at doing something blind. Uh, try to call out, you know, maybe distillery, flavor profile, proof, and see if I can get close here, guys. We'll see how I do here. So... Um, while you're doing that, feel free to throw some questions in the chat. As always, always love talking to you guys. Again, if you're just hanging out, please hit the like button. It really helps the, the, the channel out, um, you know, and we'll, we'll go from there. So let's see what we got here. Eddie D says, woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Joe Wanniger says, uh, grab the Cedar Ridge picks today and threw in one of Dusty Dan Sagamore bottles. That's right. That's right. All right. So we have letter A. Let's go here. Jordan McKellen says, speaking of Turkey, are you going to go on any Russell's picks for Ohio? You know, I really hope they have me back again uh, this year, uh, Jordan. I helped out with the Father's Day picks uh, last year. I would love to go back and do picks um, this year. Oh, guys, real quick. Next week, I'm hoping I have this video I've been working on uh, with uh, partnered with Heaven Hill. Uh, if you guys know Bernie Lovers, Bernie Lovers is the you know bourbon historian. He's also one of the uh, the the big figures in uh, in bourbon today. He's also uh, kind of the I won't say the main. There's a lot of great brand ambassadors for Heaven Hill, but he might be the most well known, arguably. But Bernie Lovers, I got to go down to uh, to the Evan Williams distiller, the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, do a full interview with uh, with Bernie Lovers on the history of rye whiskey. We're talking about Rittenhouse, we're talking about Pikesville, we're talking about Elijah Craig, we're talking about the history between Maryland versus Pennsylvania, pre-prohibition, po uh, post-prohibition. It's a great, great conversation. I'm hoping you guys get to see that video next week. Obviously, with Heaven Hill Marketing, it's got to go through a bunch of approvals, but I can't wait for you guys to check that video out. Also, at the end of the month, I was invited down by Jack Daniels to go taste their new 12-year expression and their second batch of their 10-year expression. So I don't know if I'll be able to film any footage there yet, but if I can make any content from there, you guys might see something special uh, from Jack Daniel. So uh, we'll keep you posted, but be on the lookout for, for that stuff. All right. Sample A. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Uh, Jim Stewart says, of the bourbons, let me let me throw this in the chat here. Yes, he is the bottled and bond guy. Absolutely. Jim Stewart, of the bourbons that used to be $20 to $30 but now are impossible to find and doubled or tripled, which one do you miss the most? Mine is Henry McKenna. Um, it's a, that's a really good question, dude. I would probably say... Hmm. Henry McKenna is a good one. That's a really good call out, Henry McKenna. Um, you know, you know what's you know I you know what I, I hate to say like a Buffalo Trace product, but one of my favorite. I mean, I think I just mentioned one earlier, Eagle Rare. Like that you can't find that anymore. But even beyond Eagle Rare, I think one of my favorite single barrels, even though it's ninety proof, it's not a home run hitter of a of a bourbon at all. But there's something about a bottle of Elmer T. Lee. That I don't know the fact that he was kind of the father of the single barrel bourbon and the the history behind his bottle 
and who he was as a master distiller, his history of, you know, being a pilot, dropping bombs, you know, during the war. I mean, there's something about Elmer Teeley that I wish it was a still readily available whiskey, um, a readily available bourbon. I do miss, I do miss Elmer Teeley a lot. You just, I mean, those things are ghosts. You just, you can't find them ever. I mean, you got to be really lucky or know someone to get an Elmer T. Lee these days. <laughs> Fuck it. GG, you have to write Blue Run in there? Jesus Christmas. All right. So on the nose here, it smells pretty light. Doesn't smell like there's a lot going on here. There's a little bit of a nuttiness. Sweet. Man, it smells pretty good though. A little bit of oak. Nothing too crazy here. Getting that, really picking up citrus tonight. A little bit of citrus here. Oak, a little bit of, you know, vanilla custard maybe. And that nuttiness. I mean, off the bat, makes me think maybe Beam or Heaven Hill. All right, let's give it a try. Oh, that's a nice little whiskey right there. So, shit, do I have a pen? Damn it, I'm going to have a pen near me. Ah, I need a pen. Okay, I don't have a pen, but I'm going to say it's a bourbon. For proof, Eric Sawyer, if you're watching, write, write my answers down because I don't have a pen near me. Wow, that's sweet. Proof-wise, I'm going to guess around 110-ish. I'm going to say 110 proof for this one. 110 proof. Um, Michael Weber says, recaps of the bottles, please. Recaps. Okay, real quick. Um, oh, I didn't try the Uncle Nearest Rye yet. Uh, all right, I'll have to do that next time. All right, so the bottles I tried tonight, the Bardstown for Cullen, I I liked it. I thought it was pretty decent. I think the Dickel and the Irish whiskey kind of fight each other. I don't like it for 160, but it's a, it's a nice whiskey. It's pretty damn good. I love the tropical notes on the back end, but I think Bardstown has better uh, collaborations than the for Cullen, in my opinion. Um, the Dread River, this was the one, the new Master Series from Ebony Major who left Bullet to create this whiskey. Um, this is a bourbon. It's a um, it's a blend, though, of five-year and three-year bourbons. So it's a young product for $115, and I think that's what kills it. But, I mean, this is all peaches. It is peach and lemon tea in a bottle. Um, if you like those flavors, it's a it's very well blended. I mean, Ebony Major, she knows how to freaking blend, but it's, uh, it's all peaches and, and lemon tea to me on the palate. Solid whiskey, but I probably wouldn't pay 115 bucks for that again. When it comes to the backbones, the backbone decade down, uncut straight bourbon whiskey, uh, 21% uh, mash bill from MGP, a little bit of a sherry finish on it. This is super crushable and super delicious. I love that bottle. This, on the other hand, the backbone big bash was not a fan. Nope. Apparently, this has so many different finishes blended together that it's like even hard to comprehend. I think it was like tequila and all this and rum and, and wine. And there's just, there's too much going on in it. And it did not work for my palate. I did not like that one. These two K Lukes though, are probably the best whiskeys I had tonight. The K Luke 100 proofer and the K Luke uh, cast strength. These are friggin' delicious. Very, very well blended from Maisano's. Um, it's, I could see why they got rated so high last year. And there's your recap. All right. I'm going to say 110 proof for letter A. On the palate, though, what is that? It is sweet. It is very, very sweet. I'm going to say it's something from Buffalo Trace. Yeah, maybe not. 
I don't think it's Buffalo Trace when I go back to it. I'll, I'll have to go back to it, but the I think it's a bourbon, and I'm going to guess about 110 proof on that. I'll go back to it and, and get some distillery guesses in here. All right, let's go to letter B. Oh, man, this smells delicious. Ooh, this is sweet. Seal box just sold out of K Luke. Are you serious? It sold out? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I wanted one, damn it. <laughs> Come on. Is it gone? Todd Korzinski. Speaking of delicious bourbon, did you enter the portal yet? Are you talking about the chosen portal from Blue Run? I did not enter the portal. Did not enter the portal. Oh man, this is. This is so super sweet and decadent. This is awesome on the nose. Ooh. Yes, that's right, guys. Tonight, after this, go check out Women of Whiskeys. Um, Whiskey Mountains will be on there uh, drinking some peated scotches. Good luck. Oh, it sold out about a half an hour ago? Son of a bitch. Oh, I've tasted that before. I'm going to guess on proof point that that's around 120, I'm going to say 124 proofish. I sold it out. There's some rich strawberry in there. There's a nice rye spice to it. I think I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess bourbon and I'm going to guess four roses on that one on letter B. So 120, what did I say? 124, 125 proof. I'm going to guess four roses on that one. I'm not going to get as granular as like, you know, the, uh, the recipe, but that there's something very four rosy about that. That's good. That's really good. JG says 124 bourbon, four roses. All right, you got it. Jason Moving Markets. Come on, man. Kalu small batch is still available. And the cast rank says coming soon. Yeah, when it says coming soon, it means it's fucking sold out. Son of a bitch. I hope uh, 2109, did you grab me one before it sold out? <laughs> oh, I'm pissed. Okay, let's go to letter C. Oh. Just another really rich nose here, guys. Tons of toffee and caramel. Like a like a cherry cola type note here. Oh man, that is sweet. So, I mean, this is powdered sugar, pastry. Man. That's good. Oh, that might be favorite. That might be favorite of the first three so far. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna need another sip to, before I get proof here. Oh, damn. That is not. That is not. Um, I wouldn't call that out from anything from the big distillers. I think that's something smaller. I'm gonna. I might just say NGP for that one. That's got a really nice spice to it. It's rich. It's decadent. It's sweet. I think the proof point on this one, I'm going to say 120-ish for this. I'll say it's a bourbon. I'll say 120. I got to take another sip of that. Mmm. Man, you can, you might even – I could even make the case that for being maybe like a lucky seven, maybe not even MGP, maybe going to like – I might switch to like Barton for this, like a Barton pick. Getting a little bit of cherry there, which I sometimes get in Barton. Damn. That's nice. 
I don't know whether to go Barton or MGP for that, but I'm going to have to go back to that. But I'll say Bourbon. I'll say 120 proof. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to say bourbon for that one. Yeah, I haven't come across a rye yet. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Garrett says, said it would not last long. When I talked with Jonathan on my last visit, he told me about the seal box. Uh, let me put this up here. The seal box being in the works. He's also working on other streams. I have a couple bottles on hold, says Jonathan Garrett. Okay. Yeah, the ECBP C922 is ridiculous. I hate when doing a blind find. They're all good. Infuriating. <laughs> So does Steelbox have an M&D ad on their site since Jason pushes traffic their way? Um, I don't. Um, I mean, they have a couple of my picks. If you guys uh, look up, I have two picks still available on Steelbox right now. One is our Fourgate nine-year MGP cast strength toasted rye whiskey. And, you know, it's um, it's expensive. It's like 220 bucks. And I get why there's like literally like 20 bottles left. Um, but if you look for that bottle, that one is still on seal box from Mass and Journey. Um, it's a ridiculously good toasted rye whiskey. And then we have a Taconic rye out of New York on there that nobody bought. Nobody wanted anything from Taconic. But it's a really solid rye whiskey, you know. But uh, it's expensive. It's like an $80 rye, though, uh, from out of New York. And I think that com that combination just, you know, nobody really wanted to buy it. But that four gate is still available and it's live. So if you guys want to taste a nine-year cast strength MGP toasted from four gate, it's got a nice little wooden tag on it. It's available. Um, all right. Oh, that is so familiar. What is that? I think this is a little bit of a lower proof. I'm going to go like one, uh, one. I don't think it's in the 120s. I think it's a little bit lower. I might go like 118-ish on this one. Eric Sawyer, what the hell did you send me? That one's different. This is the most unique out of all the four. Um, I'm going to guess bourbon, but I'm going to guess there's a finish on that one. I'm going to guess something finished on letter D. There is a really unique flavor profile on that one. I'm going to guess it's something finished. I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe just some fucking wacky mash bill on here. Hey, what's up, Jeffrey Wack? Now, if I had to guess ages on these, too, I'll try to do ages as well. This one's coming off a little bit younger to me. Gosh, I feel like I've tasted that before. What is that? This last one's going to bother me, dude. It's very citrusy. It's a little funky. Shit. I hate this so much. <laughs> All right. Let's try to wind this down here, guys. Let's go back to A here. So A on the nose. I'm still thinking. I'm still going like 110-ish proof. That is really citrus forward. I mean, that almost makes me think, like, I get a lot of citrus on wild turkey. Maybe that's a turkey pick. What did I say? Bourbon? Yeah, I'm going to say that's a turkey pick, Eric Sawyer. I'm guessing wild turkey on letter. Now that I go back to it and get all that citrus, I'm going to say wild turkey, 110 proof for letter A, and it's a bourbon. Age, I don't know, nine years old maybe, eight to nine. All right, second one. Oh, 
Higher proof. I'm going to go 125 for this one. Bourbon. And I'm going to guess four roses on that one. Four roses on B. Okay. Um, don't overthink it. You only get 30 seconds. Right? Yeah, exactly, JC. I need to do this shit in 30 seconds. Uh, let's go to C. This one, again, is about, I, I would say, 120, 120-ish proof. I'm getting a nuttiness there. I'm going to say Knob Creek for that one. I think it's a Knob Creek pick. I think it's Beam. It's either Beam or Heaven Hill, but I'm going to lean towards Beam. All right, let's go to the last one. This last one is befuddling me. I think the last one is, I'll say 118, 119-ish proof-wise. There's a funkiness to it. I don't know what that is. Just for that, I'm going to say it's New Riff. I get a weird aftertaste on New Riff, so I think I'm just going to guess New Riff on that one. But I'm going to guess a bourbon. All right. So what did I guess? 110, 125, 120-ish, maybe 118-ish here. I guessed, <laughs> um, I thought this was maybe Barton, but I think I'm going to switch to a, a Beam uh, profile here. So Jim Beam, New Riff, uh, this one I went, what did I say for this one? Um, oh yeah, Four Roses on B and for A. B4 Roses. What did I say for A? A John B Mash and Drum? I'll go I'll go 9 to 10 I'll go 9 years on that one. 9 years. 9 years on that one. C Knob Creek D <laughs> Ezra Brooks. I don't think I said Ezra Brooks. Okay. What did I say for A originally, guys? Remind me. Oh, I said turkey. I said wild turkey. All right. Let's see how wrong I was. Here we go. It's like the most, it's like the worst Christmas morning ever. Eric Sawyer Key. Here he is. The winner of Blend Again in 2022. Fucking me up. Here we go. I don't even want to look. This <laughs> gives the shit out of me. Uh, okay. Letter A. Fuck yes. A. A is Russell's Reserve. Private barrel selection. What did I said 110 proof. It's 110 proof. Russell's Reserve private selection. Nailed it. Fucking nailed it. Holy shit. Russell's Reserve. Are you kidding me? Guys, I might have just gotten three out of four. Oh my God. Letter A is an eight year, six month bourbon, 110 proof, warehouse K. It's a Russell's Reserve. I said wild turkey. It's a Russell's Reserve. Letter B. I said four roses. It is four roses. I said 125 proof. It's 123.4 proof. This is a tier five. It's an OESF Four Roses. Guys, I, I wish this was Matt Madness right now because I'd be fucking killing it. Letter C, I said Jim Beam. <laughs> it's a Knob Creek pick. 14-year, <laughs> 8-month, 120 proof. What did I say on the proof point? What did I say? 122, 120-ish for Knob Creek for the C? Nailed that. What is happening right now? Matt, can I can I count Matt Madness tonight right now? Holy fuck. And then D, I said was New Riff. I got that wrong. That is Driftless Glen. However, I said it was about 118 proof. It's 116. 
I got real close. Um, now that I'm smelling it and tasting it now, I can see the Driftless Glen in it. But come on. Guys, I got... Let's, look at this shit. Look. I'll even, I'll even show you. Russell's Reserve, A. Four Roses, B. Knob Creek, C. And D was a Driftless Glen. I'm I'm retiring right now. I'm retiring. Dude, I told you I was coming off being sick and my palate and my nose is on point right now. I got to get sick again and then like recover before Matt Madness happens. <laughs> I'm saying, holy shit, dude. Where is um it must be the shoes. I am I'm the Michael Jordan of guessing shit right now. Saucy Shane says, heck yeah. Get Matt to put you in <laughs> ASAP right now. Help me out. Get me in. John McKee, legend. If Matt is watching, take taking notes on what not to send you. Yeah, Matt is totally taking notes on what not to send me right now. He's like, I'm gonna send him all the Driftless Glen because he doesn't know what the fuck it is. I'm gonna send him nothing for roses, nothing Jim Beam. Holy shit. Eric Sawyer. Here was the guesses. The master drum. Okay. Eric Sawyer. Are, come on. Are you not entertained, Eric Sawyer? Eric Sawyer <laughs> nailed it. Dude. I cannot wait. So next week, I think we're going to have Eric Desmarius on to do like the 30 second thing where I have to guess shit in like 30 seconds. But I'm, I'm, I'm retiring right now. That was fucking legendary. Just say, yeah, yeah, Kino, last year, just say Wild Turkey Rare Breed for everything. Yeah, now I just got to get it down to 30 seconds to answer. That's the key. I have to figure it out in 30 seconds. That's the fucking problem. That's, yeah, that's the problem. Um, just start drinking before <laughs> Matt Madness. Wow. Okay. So I feel a lot better about where my palate is right now. Um, I think the easiest one for me to pick out was that four roses. Four roses to me stands out in blinds, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but it was really this was a lot of fun, guys. Hell of a live stream tonight, ton of fun. Um, if you have a chance, try the K Luke's, those are so effing good. This backbone, decade down, really, really good. Big bash, no, no thanks. Dread River, good, but you know, probably try a pour before you buy it. It's really good, but for the price, one hundred fifteen dollars for a three and five year old whiskey blend, uh, blend that's that's a hard sell. Um, and the I don't even know if the Bardstown for Cullen is around anymore. I've had that, just got that bottle for a little while. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go George Costanza. I'm gonna I'm gonna quit now and take a nap under my uh, table right here. Awesome. Yeah, K Luke is everything. Yeah, K Luke has some good shit. Hope you guys had a good time hanging out tonight. Next week, we have some more blind tastings, maybe some more new bottles. It's going to be a, a, a fun. I might actually have some exclusive stuff next week. So tune in next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> Love you guys. Thanks for all the support. Make sure you hit the like button before you get out of here. Head on over to Women of Whiskeys following me tonight. Uh, and as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with, like the uh, Blending Getting Champion here, Eric Sawyer. Cheers. See you guys next time, next week, right here on the Mass and Drum. Until next time. Love you guys. Cheers.